that I'm live. Hello and good morning. It's, it's been a glorious morning here. I think actually it's turned lunchtime already. But I am busy this morning. Um, I'm catching up. My work in progress that I'm working on, the piece that I'm working on today, is uh, is my the face that I was making. I'm making a face here using um, embroidery yarns. So uh, it's very detailed and uh, it's more advanced work, um, certainly the more advanced work that I do. So I thought I'd talk a little bit about this because I'm having to uh, to make adjustments and uh, not everything goes to plan. You have to experiment with things to make things go how you want them to go. So I'm just doing a black border at the moment around the face that I'm working on and I'll show you what's happening and why I'm having to make adjustments. So uh, I'll just finish this little bit um, and see how this goes. Okay, that seems to have joined up the black border that I'm doing around the, the face. So I'll leave that there. Now, what's happened? This is the face that I'm making here. And the main part of the face here is okay. It's not 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 too bumpy. It's 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 fairly flat, which is what I'm trying to do. And um I'm I'm copying um or I mean inspired, I should say, copying um, a piece by Picasso and the face I'm not exactly copying it. I'm just being sort of inspired by some of the patterns and and you if you if you know Picasso's paintings you might recall the side of the face here the hair on one of his pictures looks very very much like this the eye in mine that's my own design um here the, the eye is fairly copied fairly much from the from the picture that I found on the internet of Picasso's painting here and um, there's a piece at the top something like this but when I started to do this piece at the top it sort of wouldn't fit on the top of the head so I put a bit more on the top of the head and, and made this my own and then I started to to attach it to the face now, I did attach it to the face. I sewed all the way around here like this and attached it to the side of the face there. But what I found was that it's starting to pucker a little bit here. So I've undone it again. And what I want to do is to lay it flat. And I'm going to put some more crochet in this area here so that this part lays flat. I was trying to make it attached to that particular shape so and the same has happened at this side I attach this all the way down to here and it it's it's a straight piece it doesn't really attach without puckering the rest of this face here so I've taken it apart and I shall be doing a little triangular piece to go in here now I can actually stitch the triangular piece on as I go along or I can make a, a smaller latch patch to go in there. Um, so what I did is I made a little one here with a point on the end here and thinking that will go into that space there. It's difficult to show you there. That was going to go into that space there. And it's not too bad a, a fit to go in there, but I don't like the white. I've done it, but I don't like the white. I think that's too harsh a colour. It go, it matches the eye here, but it's too harsh a colour to go with the rest of it. So I'm going to do that again and uh, make a small little patch to go into that space into that space here and this is what it's all about it's about experimenting but the main thing that I would like is for this to lie flat and that is the reason why I've I've unstitched this and I'm going to do a little bit more in here in that gap and I've unstitched that piece when it was all tied 
all coming together, it was beginning to go a little bit sort of scrunched up. So, so that's my plan. Um, I also made a, a small piece here with my favourite stitch. I do like to include this if I can. This is Tunisian Simple Stitch. And I thought that that might go in somewhere, but it's going off in the wrong direction. So I may or I may not include it. Or I might just make another piece that might fit better. So uh, that was made me experimenting this morning. Uh, in this uh, box where I keep all these yarns, I, I always say, if you do something, like, like this particular piece here, I wouldn't take it out. I'll put it in a box and keep it, and I call them treasures. If you heard me do things, we say things before, keep them as treasures. You could children can have treasures, but you can have treasures too, and that's a little treasure that I could maybe use. Um, in that box, I found this one of the first eyes that I ever made. Here, it's very detailed. I came across it, and I, I can see how detailed it is. And I think what I'm doing here in this eye is just doing slip stitches and one or two have a look yeah one one or two uh, double crochets in there i think so it's very very detailed with lots of different colors certainly enjoyed doing it now that that actually was an eye that was copied from a picture that i found um on the internet so it is possible to do very, very detailed work, um, as you can see there. Hold it a bit, a bit closer. Here's another one. This was one of my first, first eyes that I did. And uh, when I did this, I, I, I made the eye and I really didn't realise that if you make eyes this size, by the time your face is finished it becomes quite large so uh, so just be aware of that when you're making the eyes and the other thing that happened with this is that I made two of them um, thinking yeah two eyes put them together and they ended up with this in the wrong the, the pupil in the wrong place so it ended up looking very much like a squint on the face so I, I really abandoned that one and that's how I came to have this this spare one here as a treasure so eventually i mean you could you could just make a, 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 a crochet them together maybe pieces that you've made could come together to make something that's up to you what you might want want them for in the future but don't throw them away or don't take them out and have a go using them um, in a different way so uh, i've also been looking at um the idea of making small patches to go to go in your work um you can add patches like i have done here or you can just simply put them on um work them onto the side as i did when i was doing these the face main part of the face here this bit's been crocheted onto the side and then you find that you get gaps in between so i've been looking at, at how we can do small pieces um using double knitting yarn this is a piece that I've been working on. It's, it's, it's like uh, working in, on a circle. I think I ought to call these circular latch patches because uh, they, they often start with a circle when I do these. And uh, also you can see that, that if you work into the back loops of the stitch, then you get this like little ridge going round, which I think is quite nice to see that little ridge of it by working into the back loops i think you can see that certainly very clear on this blue here where there's a ridge going around and that's because it's all worked into the back loop and then you can change the stitch size as you go around so when you for instance when you're using this green here you would start with just a slip stitch and then a double crochet and triple. so for this particular piece then is for those people who are already doing traditional crochet not doing an awful lot of free form crochet there aren't many stitches in here it's best basically a flat piece there's no booleons and and um what i call textural stitches in there it's just getting larger as i said before with slip stitch a double crochet half treble which is a bit bigger 
and then a treble, which is a bit bigger still. So you've got the different sizes. Work up the sizes to the side here and then start going back down again. Don't go from a double crochet up to a, a triple. Uh, a triple. Put the half trebles in between so that it, it smoothly goes up and down as you're going round. You can see this this one here is getting larger as it comes round and then it comes the blue becomes smaller again. And the same with this bit of red here. Starts large, gets bigger and comes back round. And also if you keep if you do this you can find that you can make make a circle and then by doing these um, it's almost like a corner piece here. If you were doing them like that, you could actually make your circle become almost square or even pointed and triangular. So we we'll look at that maybe in another video, how you can do these smaller pieces. And of course, if you're doing a large area of free form, you can fit these smaller, these smaller bits in between to fill in the gaps, which is what I need really here to fill, fill in some gaps. So I need some smaller pieces working in in the um uh, the embroidery yarn, of course, not the double knitting yarn. I, I have had a go at um, doing something similar. And if you're teaching children or if you're a beginner and um, I have one student and she's only ever done latch hook crochet, so she's never learned all the double crochets, triples and so on. So all she's doing is basically is is chain and slip stitch. So this particular latch patch here is just done in the same manner, but it's done with with just chain and slip stitch. And to get the different sizes, you start with a small with a small chain of about three, three or four, three three chain, and then you get bigger, so you do about seven chain to make your large areas here, and then you. They get smaller again. You can see it here. This one's a bit larger for the corner and then it goes smaller again right down to a slip stitch. So that's a nice little project to do it with children who are just learning to do a chain. The centre here is just with chain and slip stitch as well. Just making like a flower shape into the centre. So that's something I'm working on, looking at how we can develop this for for beginners, just making these easy, easy chains. These are chains, not actually stitches, if that makes sense. They're not double crochets. They're not traditional stitches like doubles, trebles and half trebles and so on. They're just still chain and slip stitch in the whole of that. So which is quite interesting, really. So it's a similar sort of thing. But it must be easy to do for anybody who's just learnt two stitches. So that's interesting and I think that's all I've got to talk about today so I'm going to leave it there. It's a fairly short video I hope and uh, and uh, do enjoy yourself. Look, I, I, I didn't put any makeup on today. Look, I've been swimming. Oh, it's Easter's over and I went for an early swim this morning. I swam for three quarters of an hour. This is my my exercise when I do get around to doing it and I left and had an early swim at 7.15 this morning so I've been really good. <laughs> Let me know if you've been really good. And uh, um, I'm still a bit of a chocoholic, I'm afraid. So that's not very, that's not going down very well. Um, I put my earrings on just to be crochet-like look. And uh, what else can I say? Oh, yeah, my gardening hands. I'm planting seeds at the moment. So I've got no nail varnish on, look. My nails are all, all working hands, I'm afraid. So, um, yeah, that, that's me at the moment, just coming along as I am. Um, and I thought, oh, yeah, I'll go live again today and see how, uh, see if we can just um, focus a bit on crochet and sit and let you know how I'm doing with my work in progress. So bye for now and we'll catch you again soon. Bye.